All right, so taking apart everything, trying to understand what the alignment's actually doing in hopes of doing it better each time since I seem to be inconsistent. I know a lot of other people have gotten it, but I'm just having fun with this. So disassemble chamber. The chamber just so so ultimately the goal is we have a upper burr and a lower burr and we're trying to make them flat against each other. So when you grind ultimately you want to have the same gaps between the burrs on all sides because if you don't then you're not guaranteed to end up with the same particle size coming out of all parts of the grinder. So if I could just get the thing apart. So ultimately what we want is these two things to be perfectly flush with each other when they're grinding. Or not flush, but we want them to be perfectly parallel so that the gap around all of it is the same. So to do that, this positioning is already set relative to the lower to the grind chamber because it just screws in on top. So we can't change anything about this. This just gets tightened. Yeah, if you under or over tighten it, it might change its movement up and down, but ultimately this is set. So what we have to do is take the lower carrier and mess with it to get it to line up here. Now, there are three parts to this. There's this thicker cylindrical section, which fits through the bearing in the grind chamber as such and spins. There's the hexagonal part, which the gear goes on to, and then that is what attaches to the belt, get motor power through. And then finally, there's this lower part, which goes into the motor plate bearing right there. And then this rests on the wedge, and then the wedge moves this up and down. So you can see the carrier going up and down, and that's how you make adjustments. So there are three things holding the axle. Machining tolerances in the axle, the bearings are going to be really, really good, but the axle is not necessarily going to have a perfectly snug fit. And you can see this. So when the axle is just in here like this, you can tilt. I'll raise it up a little bit so that you can see more. Plus you'll never grind with it flush to the bottom. That'd be way too coarse of a setting. So right now I am able to move the axle back and forth in the bearing. That obviously changes the angle, the plane created by that burr, and will cause it to be out of alignment if it is not tilted the right way. The same goes for the lower, the motor plate burr. This is just sitting in here like this. Well, we can, I'm holding the motor plate, we can move this back and forth. It can be tilted. So you have this plane moves around because the axle does not fit perfectly into the bearing because that's just a machining tolerance. That's just normal. That's how it is. The third thing with the belt, this has some play to it, not a whole lot, um, more so in this direction than in this direction. But really what's going to happen is the belt and the motor, this is going to pull on here and you can have two things happen first this could pull in an anti in a non perfectly parallel way so if you have a motor shaft and then this axis of rotation that are not parallel the top part of the belt the part pacing the burrs right now is going to pull harder than the bottom part if they're perfectly aligned you'll get the same tension across the entire width of the belt however we know that the motor plate is not we know that the shaft of the motor is not perfectly parallel with this rotation. So you're going to get some sort of uneven tension on the belt. And that's going to cause this to be able to be shifted. So using these three things, the goal of making these flush is as follows. So when you have the system assembled, but not tightened. So we have the burr carrier here and then we have the gear here with the belt around it 
on the motor plate. So in this configuration, you'll note that when you do screw the chamber all the way down, you can't change the height. You're not shimming at these points. So the way the chamber is resting against this plate is the way that it's going to be tightened. You're not, say, tilting it by having these more tightened than these, no. The only thing you can change with the chamber is translation. So you can move it this way, this way, just on this plane. Note that on the grind chamber, you have the upper bearing and on the motor plate, you have the lower bearing. Then you have in the middle, the belt. So with those three things, you can create an offset in the tilting, you create an offset between the two bearings, which will tilt the shaft. And the idea is to create an offset that matches, that's within the tolerances of the shaft and the bearings that equally offsets the tension from the belt, allowing this to be flat against the top burr. So you'll have the top burr installed when you do the alignment, you'll flip it upside down to make the burrs flat against each other, and then you'll basically tighten everything in such a way that the offset of the two bearings accounts for any anti-parallel tension, non-parallel tension, I guess, between the motor shaft and the axis that you grind on, the rotation of the the burrs. So if I tighten the motor right now just to a, a reasonable belt tension, like nothing specific, just what you would normally tighten a belt to, where it's not over tight, but then again, you don't have a bunch of slack. You just have enough to, this would be too loose. One sec. Actually, no, that's fine. So if you have it set up like this, this thing still moves because it's not tightened. And you'll note that if you, let's get this in focus better. If you shift, see how the burr's moving right now? See how the burr's tilting? So the idea is with this set motor tension, this, this is where it gets really complicated and where some people get lucky and some people really struggle. You'll have a set motor tension here. If the motor belt is loose while you're tightening down the chamber, when you retighten the motor, if the tension is different, you won't be aligned to that specific tension because as the tension in the belt changes, the amount that you can tilt the burr changes. And if you can tilt the burr too much, then you're going to, or if you can turn belt, yeah, if you can tilt the burr too little, you won't be able to align it to the plate. Because remember, we can't just go to one side of the tolerance and tighten everything because that might not be aligned with this. We need to get the burrs to be flat against each other and then offset the bearings in an appropriate way to offset the amount of tension that's currently in the belt. So my theory right now for why some people have success when they don't loosen the belt tension is that the belt is already tensioned in the range that allows you to make the burrs flat against each other. Myself, the first time I aligned, I made the belt tension really, really loose and I likely tightened it outside of a range that allowed me to make the burrs flat against each other and I had to redo it. That was a while ago, but such is the case. So I have this tightened up. So when you flip this upside down, and push the burrs against each other, we can be confident right now the burrs are flat against each other, assuming I don't have some major offset in the bearings that's tilting the burrs from touching. So if you were to just hold this like this, hold the burrs together and do a marker test, the burrs would be touching the whole time. There's no question. Because right now there's enough slop everywhere that they're just allowed to fall into place. However, we can't keep the slop, we have to tighten it in some fashion. So the goal would then be to loosen the camera a little bit, tilt it down. The goal is to then push the burrs together such that they we know for a fact that they are parallel to each other, having the motor at a certain tightness, and then tighten the chamber together in such a way that gives us the offset we need in the bearings to allow them to be aligned. If the motor tension is not in the right window, the right range, you won't be able to find an offset between the bearings that actually allows them to be parallel. I don't know what that range is. I don't know what it's dictated by. My feeling is if you're too tight, um, you're just not gonna have enough translation. Like the tighter the tension is, the less you'll be able to tilt the carrier 
and the amount you need to tilt the carrier is all dependent on the tolerances you're working with. So that's why it's a range and it's going to be different for every grinder. I'm going to put the screws in and then move forward with this. So I'm just going to put them in. I'm not going to tighten them yet, and I'm going to go through everything again. It's also very cold down here. It's got to be like 55 degrees, so it's a little bit chilly for fingers to be working properly. This is the only place I have to work right now. It's like zero out the old Minnesota winter one thing I learned is my salt cellar is the perfect height to hold this while I'm screwing stuff in All right, so with these partially screwed in, the motor tensioned, I'm going to make sure that the wedge is pushing against the plate to make sure that's flush, and then make sure that the burr has, the lower burr carrier has fallen all the way down so that it's up against the upper carrier. Since I can still translate this, I it's not tight yet in such a way, see how it's still moving back and forth, for that direction that's creating that offset in the bearings when you rotate like this you're not really creating an offset so really you're you're going to be translating you're not going to be rotating about the axis of rotation of the burrs if i was to just hold it to one end and tighten it there's no saying that that amount of tolerance and that amount of tension in the belt would actually make them aligned we want this to be plenty loose so that we can be certain that the burrs are flat against each other when we tighten things. So I will push the levers down. They do bounce as is shown in Jake's original video. And then I'm going to hold the chamber down as well so that it's in the soup. I'm going to push this down. That's going to align the burrs and make them flat against each other. And then I'm going to hold the chamber down and tighten in a crisscross pattern just because you do that with tires. So you should probably do it here too. And so we're forcing the burrs together right now in a parallel fashion. So I'm going to bounce it a little bit more to make sure the burrs are together. Now I'm going to tighten all the way. Okay, and now do a wiper test, wipe test. Now, I guess there's a chance this isn't aligned, right? Because I could have had the wrong motor tension. And I have actually found in my alignment, um, I've, I've struggled a lot. I've usually had to loosen and tighten the chamber three or four times before I actually get something. And what was odd, which happened the last time, was I, uh, I definitely had everything tightened and I had a really good wipe. And then I put the whole machine together and I checked it again and it was not good. So I'm guessing I'm just hoping that that doesn't happen again because it's been a long day. All right, so don't believe this was markered. Nope, so I'm going to marker it real quick. So one important thing is 
if you take off the upper carrier, you cannot take the lower carrier out and maintain an alignment because that'll shift the gear around and change how everything's oriented and the alignment will fall apart. So you have to be careful when you have the top off. Okay. So now make sure that's tightened. And just hold it upside down and bounce the burrs together. So gravity's holding them together right now. I am not for the marker test. And then we'll take this off. Really try not to grip it by the motor when doing this because I don't want to shift the position of the motor. All right, and so it's wiped. It's really hard to see on the camera, but it's wiped. Let's see if I can find an angle. It's missing, well, no, it's still wiped there. It's wiped all here. This is actually pretty good. I'm pretty happy with this. There's a couple. Let's see if I can find an angle. There we go. So let's look at this side. Wiped, 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 wiped. Wipe, 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 wipe. There's one section. No, this is actually it's pretty solid. The only part that's not perfect is this part right here. This part is not wiped as much, but it's still, like, I can still see it scraped away. And note that that's where this marker is, this, this mark. This mark is always right here when I've tightened it. Every single time I've had an off alignment, the part that doesn't get wiped is the part that's on the motor side. That wouldn't tell me that the burr is tilted like this towards the motor, which tells me that the top part of the tension well, it tells me that the upper bearing and the lower bearing are tilted like this to try to tilt the burr like that to align to this. And I guess, I think this just comes down to tension because if you were to loosen it and try to straighten it out more, if there's, or not tension, tolerance, sorry. If there was too much tolerance, too, too much of a gap in the bearing and the axle, if you align them more and more, it's going to have more and more play. So you need enough of a misalignment between the bearings to knock out the tolerance, but not too much that it's misaligned from this and the motor belt tension offsets the rest. That's my theory. I'm pretty happy with this wipe. So I'm going to go with it. I'm at 18 minutes now in this video, so I'm not going to reassemble the entire Vario and test again. Uh, I'm going to cut the video now and, and I guess none of this is just confirmed based off what you've seen, right? I've, I've pulled things together. I've, Tried to tilt stuff. I've tried to understand what's going on. This is one vario, if, vario. I don't really know how you say it. If anyone else wants to do this and try to confirm any of this, or if you have different tolerances, or if you had a different process, I mean, this is how we learn. Thanks for watching.